peppers can be a really challenging crop to grow, especially when starting them from seed. And so I wanted to put together this video specifically to deal with peppers to hopefully help share some of my own experiences and what I have know, what I've learned from growing peppers over these last few years. And I especially want to focus on uh, what I've done this season uh, because so far this season, my pepper plants are doing amazing. Way better than uh, they have ever done whenever I've tried to grow them. Some of them were even beginning to bear fruit before I transplanted them into the garden. And this video is really going to focus on starting pepper plants, right? From the beginning, the first few months or so. Because if you really pay a lot of attention to your pepper plants in the first few months, you are setting those plants up for success. And so that is what I'm going to really focus on in this video. Of course, peppers are generally a pretty long season crop. We start them almost in midwinter and then we grow them out as seedlings and then we transplant them outdoors uh, once the weather conditions become suitable. And then they can produce for months until the first frost. So taking it all the way back to the seeds. So the pepper itself, not the plant, but the actual pepper is botanically technically a fruit. And these fruits of course contain seeds. And so what I had was I had some of these pepper fruits, right? It, it was a small sized variety of pepper, but it was a sweet pepper, not a hot pepper, right? And so I saved these seeds from these plants and you know dried them and i put them in a container to store them until i was ready to plant them in basically it was mid-february but i didn't plant these seeds in the soil right i what i did was i put them in a damp paper towel and i put those in a container and then i basically incubated them for a few days a week or so and so i had this heat mat that i had in this plastic tote but this plastic tote had a good base layer of sand in it and I, and I had the heat mat within this layer of sand right so that it would heat up evenly and it wouldn't get almost like searing hot or anything like that so there was a little bit of a buffer uh, and that sand would also kind of hold some of the heat so I had that all in the bin and I put the lid on the bin so I really tried to kind of keep the heat in as much as possible and I would plug it in um, for a certain amount of time maybe a couple of hours at a time or so uh, during the day and I might do that like two or three times throughout the day and then I would unplug it at night and then I would repeat that process for the next day and until these peppers uh, would really kind of begin to sprout and I would kind of pick those seeds out one by one as the roots started to grow out from those seeds right I wouldn't take them out too early but like if the roots are just starting to poke out of the seed you'd probably give it 12 more hours or maybe another day until like I had a nice long kind of a tap root that I could then more easily put into the soil. And then of course the soil, what I used was I used my homemade mushroom substrate soil, which worked wonders, um, <laughs> you know, in retrospect. And of course I've mentioned this innumerable times in other videos. And so I'd make sure that these seedlings got, got water once they were in that soil and I put them under artificial lighting inside the house. I also found that this mushroom substrate soil really did a great job at keeping the soil and the substrate evenly moist. Uh, also, it helped kind of keep it from drying out really fast. It would help to kind of hold on to more of that moisture uh, over a longer period of time. And so these pepper plants grew a lot faster than expected. And I think it was really because of this mushroom soil. They were beginning to flower like a month, month and a half before I was ready to plant them out. Some of them even started to, to bear a little bit of fruit, I immature fruit, not ripe fruit, but you know, in their pots before I was ready to plant them out too. So definitely next season, uh, if I grow these plants again, I want to probably move the seed starting date for these peppers up to maybe like late February, early March, because I don't need to necessarily grow them as as early as, as I did. Now, once nighttime temperatures started to hit 60 degrees, uh, then 
I, and they hit 60 degrees consistently, then I put the pepper plants out, right? If you get, uh, usually if you get nighttime pe temperatures below that when the pepper plants are out, um, that can kind of cause issues with flowering and fruiting, and it may either uh, delay it or cause other challenges with that. And definitely you don't want to plant them out um, when temperatures are going, nighttime temp temperatures are going, um, you know, into the 40s or below 40s, because then they can uh, really kind of begin to show um, damage from the cold, right? It doesn't even have to get frosty, you know, it just needs to be, um, you know, cold enough uh, in order for, uh, you know, that damage to really take hold, right? And so when these nighttime temperatures were hitting uh, into the 60s, uh, this was also when the high bush cranberry was um, in flower. And in fact, it was almost done blooming. Also, the dame's rocket plant had been blooming for a couple of weeks and was continuing to pump out those blossoms. The peonies were just beginning to open up and bloom. The bittersweet nightshade was uh, coming into to blossom. And the fruits on the gooseberry bushes were developing right they were kind of in that middle stage so that was just a little bit of phenology for you so that we can kind of look at the landscape to know when we can plant these pepper plants outside right, so once those temperatures started to hit 60 degrees i planted those plants out of course i would dig the hole i'd, I'd take the pepper plants out of their trays gently and put them in the hole i'd water them then i'd cover it in with soil so when i planted these plants out i did an 18 inch spacing per plant right so I'd, I'd plant one plant, go eight, 18 inches out, plant another one right in, the, in these rows. Um, now I did two rows per bed and I would stagger them where I did 18 inches for one plant and then nine inches out on the, on the other row next to it, I would do a plant nine inches out uh, back to that original row, I'd plant another plant. Um, right so I'd kind of stagger it and the two rows are only like 18 inches foot and a half apart pepper plants are kind of similar to tomatoes where they can start to form some level of roots adventitious roots at the bases of the stem so you can plant them a little bit deeper than you would other crops so I tried companion planting these peppers with uh, some other plants right to try to maximize space and to kind of see how these plants would grow together right and so I planted these peppers with milk thistle and cucumbers initially. Now the milk thistle was kept on getting taken out by rabbits, unfortunately. So I don't really have much milk thistle that has remained. Uh, the peppers seem to be very unfazed. The rabbits don't seem to touch the peppers at all. And the cucumbers are doing pretty well, right? The idea is that the peppers will grow up and produce fruit, whereas the cucumbers will spread out on the ground underneath to catch all that extra sunlight and produce fruit uh, of their own on the ground cover layer. So going back to the milk thistle, now that I have only two plants left out of, I don't know, 30 or 40 that I had initially planted in that first round, I am replacing it actually with some cane off, which is kind of uh, not as common of a crop, but it was commonly used as a fiber crop. It's also reported as uh, an edible crop as well. It has a whole bunch of different uses. So I'm really kind of trying to work that crop into my growing system as well. But anyway, since these pepper plants have been transplanted, they have continued to grow very well. And the fruit that they're producing continues to become more numerous and hopefully will ripen up soon. These particular varieties of peppers will probably turn like orange or yellow when the, when ripe. Um, they're still kind of like um, green, but they're fading to like a lighter color of green. So uh, they're probably uh, getting to that point where they're gonna have a little bit more beta carotene and get that more orange and yellowish hues to them. So I've made sure that these plants get consistent water. Um, you know, whenever it doesn't rain for a little bit, I'm out there watering the plants and then I also made a point to layer on some grass clippings which provide some nitrogen and then they also help to act as a buffer between the outside air and the soil and so it helps to kind of maintain a more stable environment within the soil which can benefit the health and growth of uh, the pepper plants right it also helps to conserve water in the soil too so that 
more water is accessible for longer periods of time to these pepper plants in the soil. Also around some of these uh, pepper plants, I have also experimented with putting rocks up around some of these plants. So the rocks help to kind of absorb some of the extra heat from uh, the sun and to kind of reflect that back uh, towards the plant. And so I want to kind of see if that really acts as a benefit to uh, uh, help, the, help these pepper plants grow at a reasonably good pace and produce good bountiful yield of peppers. So thank you so much for checking out this video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.